Thanks. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for coming in. It's the last session, and I promise I'll be open for the same time. If, if not, I'll open the bar. <laughs> um, so, my name is Joe Allen. I've been uh, in the Apple space for about 25 years now. Um, and I'll go through my backstory a little bit later on as we get into this. Um, but this idea has been floating around in my brain for the last few years. Um, you know, I've been uh, running tech companies and, and managing people for a long number of years, and the whole concept of mentoring people and, and giving that knowledge back and helping people better themselves, it's been kind of sitting in my brain as an idea for a presentation. Um, no idea how this is going to go. It can go very, very well. It can go very awful. I, I, I am not a trained psychotherapist. Uh, I have no degree in mentorship or anything like that. This is my life experience, and, uh, and this is what I'm going to give you, uh, for better or worse. I have checked there's no rotten fruit in the room, so I'm safe on that count. But, uh, they threw it at me earlier. Uh, excellent, excellent. Thanks for taking that. Um, also, uh, this slide deck uh, was written and uh, designed and has been rebuilt several, several iterations um, before I decided to leave my CEO position in my last job and take up the position with John. And doing a handover from CEO uh, and CTO uh, joint role to a team uh, kind of absorbs your life a little bit. So uh, I will be reading from my slides an awful lot. So apologies to people upstairs. I will not be uh, looking at you. I'll give you all the way you now. <laughs> we'll get that bit out of the way because unfortunately I'll be looking here for most of it. <laughs> Um, so, be a mentor, not a monster. Uh, again, trying to come up with a theme for it, trying to come up with something a little bit witty for it. I went to the guys in Amsis and said, you know what, I've got an idea. Be a mentor, not a megalomaniac. And they said, why? Might be a bit risky, but be a mentor, not a muppet. <laughs> um, mm might offend somebody there. So we ended up with be a mentor, not a monster. Um, and the objective of this is to engender discussion about how you can influence a positive metamorphosis on people's career, or in English, to provoke thoughts around how you can make a difference and pass on your experiences. So again, I'm very passionate about this, about the responsibility that we have as sysadmins and as techs and as managers to pass down what we've learned over the years and pass it on to the next generation and help them develop themselves. Um, be as interactive as you like during the session, okay? Um, I tend to meander, okay? So uh, if, if you get bored, boo me. If you've got a question, throw it at me. Um, um, my take on on this is, uh, as I say, it's not structured out. So, I decided better look at what a mentor is actually defined as. Um, so I discovered that uh, it comes from um, from Ulysses. Okay? Nice little Irish link to it. Uh, Ulysses is uh, Ulysses in Latin, Odysseus in Greek. Um, before he went off to Troy, um, he asked Mentor to take care of his son Telemachus and prepare him to succeed him as the king of Ithaca. Uh, so Mentor had to be like a father, a master, a model, a reliable counsellor and a challenge stimulating instructor so that Telemachus could become a wise, truthful and prudent king. There's something interesting. Uh, so that, that encompasses where the term mentoring comes from. Okay. Um, and uh, so, in essence, mentoring is supposed to be a one-to-one -one relationship by means of which the mentor invests their time, knowledge, and effort to help the mentee reach their full pot potential as a person and as a professional regarding their behavior, knowledge, and skill. Okay? And that's, that's really what you try and achieve. It's a two-way relationship where you try and get backwards and forwards. There's a quote I came across. At school, I was never more than halfway up the class. It was a very bright class. My classmates were very, my class work was very untidy. 
and my handwriting was the despair of the teachers. But my classmates gave me a nickname, Einstein, so presumably they saw signs of something better. When I was 12, one of my best friends bet another friend a bag of sweets that I would never come to anything. I don't know if this bet was ever settled, and if so, which way it was decided. That's from Stephen Hawkins. Now, I in no way claim to be Stephen Hawkins or anywhere near that part, but it gives you a feel for people's perception and, uh, and the fact that everybody has something to give, even if it doesn't really come true at an early stage. Uh, so if we look at experienced, okay, um, take my history from, from when I started out in this industry. In the 90s, I worked with Apple, um, so I worked up there for, for eight years across multiple departments inside there. Uh, I jumped out in 98, we were working on Mac OS 8.5. Anybody remember those days? Yeah, good old days. Take out the finder, put in the finder. <laughs> we build a system, lovely. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I ended up in the software test engineering department, and worked on Mac OS 8.5, and when that was released, Steve Jobs uh, consolidated things and were moving a lot of things around Apple, so I took the opportunity to jump out. I set up a uh, service department for one of the local Apple resellers, Grew that team, built it out, uh, they merged with another company, I became service director of that company. That didn't work out so well and I jumped out and I set up my own company, uh, Stream Solutions. So we ran that from uh, 03 to 2013, um, very, very tech based. Um, in, at that time uh, there was a big gap in the marketplace where we had an awful lot of guys who were pushing boxes. Um, Typical Apple reseller was a sales-based organization. Uh, I took a very different slant on it and set up a tech-based organization and grew up a tech team around them and, uh, and we've done a lot of good stuff over those years. In parallel to that for the last 25 years, I've been a Taekwondo instructor. Uh, I'm a fifth degree black belt. You wouldn't necessarily think it, but uh, I'm over training a little bit. Um, Ran a Taekwondo club for 13 years alongside my wife. Um, black belt examiner, so I've graded people from white belt all the way up to fifth degree. Um, I'm an international coach, an international referee, and I've been grateful enough to train three world champions. Um, and again, taking them from white belt all the way up through. And they're, uh, um, so, the two parts of that, I feel, Give me a little bit of experience in this arena. Uh, trusted. Anybody trust me? <laughs> uh, trust is earned. It's not enforced. Okay. Uh, I would never start a mentorship program with a new recruit. Okay, because what you need, trust takes time. Um, some organisations will. They'll bring somebody in the door. They'll assign them a, ment a mentor, a mentee and uh, they'll run away on that way. And you can, you can definitely build it, but um, the, if, if you really want a mentorship program to work, you really need the right fit of two people. And for that to happen, you need to understand the professional traits and the personal traits of the person and get to a point where you can assign one to the other. Um, and trust comes from respect. Respect needs to be earned, and to earn something takes time and effort. So, if we look at this, oh That's no, the audio. Right. Rule number one: never oh. trust anybody. <laughs> trust is earned, not enforced. <laughs> okay, so you force somebody to trust you. That's what happens. Um, and think about how you gain trust with people. Um, look at this in the context of our jobs. We're all Apple sysadmins in one shape or another. Um, and why do people trust us? Yeah. Um, any thoughts on what helps people to come along and go, okay, I'm okay with you taking apart my computer, or I'm okay with you building systems. Because you know how to put it back together. Well, we put it back together again. Well. There you go. 
Absolutely. So they have confidence in the fact that we can put it back together again. They've seen us do it before. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any others? We mentor someone not just for the good of the company, but also for the good of the individual. If somebody has a good work-life balance, they're going to be more positive at work. If they're more positive at work, they perform better. And if they perform better, they've got a better perception of themselves. So we create a combined understanding of how the person influences the professional and vice versa. And that's the true foundation of mentoring. So it's getting that whole circle where you're taking every element into consideration. You're not just going, I need to tick a box because my boss said that I must take care of this guy. Right? Mentoring is taking those elements into it and they're really helping the person develop themselves with you just being there as the buffer along the edge to kind of bump them back up, back into the middle of the road when they start veering towards the cliff. Uh, training is long, is, is short term, okay, mentoring is long term, okay, again, we're back to our training in a box, it has boundaries, it has limitations, and it's, it's kind of going to be a finite, whether that be a one hour course that you're forced to go on, or a master's degree that, that you're interested in doing, and then find out halfway through, actually, I'm not really that interested in it, but you still have to do it because... Somebody keeps on telling me you can't bail out, no. Nothing at all to do with anybody, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Training is performance driven. Uh, mentoring is development driven. Okay? So, training's purpose is to develop the individual, not only for the current job, but for the f future. And that's very important. Um, but de development is helping people realize their potential very, very different from the, the modus operandi of training. Um, this distinction differentiates the role of the manager and that of the mentor, because both, in essence, are traveling down the same path. Both are working in the best interest of the company and in the best interest of the employee. But mentorship goes beyond the training and beyond that rote type of development into something that's much, much deeper. Um, I hire staff on the basis that they're going to leave me. Everybody does. It's, some leave at 65, some leave six months after they start, but everybody will leave. Um, strangely enough, I've got, most of my staff have hung around, uh, and most of them haven't hit 65 yet. But uh, it's, uh, but rather than using the fact that I know they're going to leave, as a barrier and holding things back, uh, I embrace it and I make sure that when they leave the office, they leave as a more rounded person and that they've gained something from their time. Uh, and that's, that's, that's really important to me that, uh, that irrespective, if I've taken them on board and uh, we've made a commitment to one another, then if it doesn't work out, they leave a better person and they've learned something from that process. Um, the way we used to do it, we'd hire apprentices, we trained them to do their job, we'd mentor them to be the best that they could be, and then they'd move, eventually move on into the industry. Or they'd go very old with me and we'd get cranky at each other and eventually one of us would drop off our mortal coil. <coughs> uh, and the guys that have moved on and have moved into different industries or worked within the same industry, I'm still in contact with each and every one of them. Um, and they come back to me for, they come back to me for business, okay, in the context of, of my old role, of has got a case of, yeah, you know what, you need an expert, call in Jar and his team, they'll take care of it. And, and that's, that's a nice, but they also come back to me for a chat. And that mentor relationship carries on beyond it. Now it's not as closely bonded as it is, but also at the bond that, that's not easily broken, so you still have that relationship there. Um, mentoring is good practice. <coughs> From the business point of view, uh, whether you're looking for the next CEO or the next system administrator, it's a great way to ensure that a business flourishes. Um, 
We all buy into the companies that we work for. Um, if not, there's no point in working somewhere. But there are no good pensionable jobs anymore. Um, when I was leaving school, I was, my, I was told to become a teacher, a priest, or a doctor. Okay. <laughs> good pensionable jobs. Um, I became a Max Lissenden. <laughs> You're a doctor. <laughs> You're a doctor in your way. <laughs> I, I am. I cure things. Um, and when that becomes one-sided, move on. Um, what I would say to everybody here, start preparing for that day now. Okay? If, if you're not already down the track where you've got somebody spotted to replace you, start looking at it now, because the day will come. Um, and if it never comes, fantastic. You stay as king of the castle and you stay doing the best you can do within your role and everyone's happy. Um, but if it does, make sure that the guy or girl who takes over your seat has the best chance possible at being the best they can be within that role. And the only way they'll be the best that they can be is learning from you and understanding from you. And it breeds the right balance between stability and innovation in a business. Okay. An example. Anybody remember these two guys? <laughs> uh, Steve Jobs mentored Tim Cook for a number of years preparing him for the role. Now, I don't know what exactly that mentorship program looked like, but the end result of it wasn't bad. Uh, if, we, if we look at where they were then, where they are now, you look at 2011 when Steve said, sorry guys, I'm off ski and uh, Tim's now in charge, everybody said, we're all in trouble. We're all doomed, the industry's gonna fail, nobody <coughs> can replace Steve Jobs. And you know what, Apple's still there, and they're, we could spend hours arguing the toss around whether they're doing a good job or not. I hate the fact that there's no ACSA program anymore, and I hate the fact that they've degraded us all to the level of, Okay, you're Mac Tech, so you've done Mac integration basics? Wow. Sorry, rant over. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in my slide deck, that was just that was in, in here. Uh, so the issue of succession is vitally important. Okay, uh, If all of your company's uh, talents, contacts and drive come from the same person, then the business is worthless. Um, if that person decides to leave you, they leave with all those contacts, they leave with all that drive and that talent, and what have you left behind? If you plan for this, um, you need to start planning for that eventually, uh, eventuality, especially if that person is you. Okay? Uh, those who don't get it think that put, by pushing away anyone who is a threat, they are strengthening their position. Um, but the reality is that they're, they're doing this to the detriment of both the company uh, as a whole and ultimately to themselves as a person. Um, I know guys in the industry who are fantastic at what they do, but they hold back. They won't let out the secret sauce because they feel that, well, if, if, if everybody is as good as I am, then I just become part of the crowd. Uh, I love the fact that a lot of my techs are better than me. Uh, I get so much pride from that because that means I've done something right. If, uh, if I was the Mac guy, which for a long number of years I was, and it was a lovely pedestal to be on, and I'd look in the mirror and I'd go, yeah, I've done well. <laughs> um, but there's no real self-worth in that. Uh, the real value and the real feel good factor that you get is from seeing the guys that come up behind you and suddenly surpass you. It's again back to my Taekwondo career and looking at my students who started off as a white belt and just standing there teaching them how to punch and uh, next thing you know a few years later they're fighting at a world championship level uh, in an arena where you couldn't even get in the door of <laughs> and succeeding at that and I love that. I love the fact that they're better than me. Um, and that's, that's what mentorship is. That is, if, if you can make yourself obsolete, then you've done a damn good job. 
And if, if you get to that point, hopefully the people around you and above you will recognise it well enough to leave you still sit in your seat and continue on doing what you're doing because you bring so much value through that. Yeah, you're, you're an idiot. This, this is where the new world order is and I've got all the power. Right? Um, and a lot of those guys have vanished uh, or have become irrelevant as we've all matured in this space. Um, but a lot of those guys who, who were those Unix experts back in those days and shared the knowledge, I said, look, here, I'll show you what the terminal is all about. Look at this, LS. Whoa, I learned something new. Um, and have developed that things. They're the guys who are well regarded within this industry. And they're the guys who, who we all still look up to, but they don't stand on that pedestal and they don't beat us up over it. Company founders are particularly prone to this. Uh, it's, it, goes in hand in hand with entrepreneurship and that, that drive that you need to get a business off the ground. Um, and it's fine for the building stage of a company, um, but it should dissolve once the business hits that norming phase, uh, once it's established and it's self-sustaining. Um, actually, one thing, if you're mentoring, you don't want your mentor to be a carbon copy of yourself. Because if you develop a identity of yourself, then that person, if you're, let's say, ego-driven, will be ego-driven. If you're an introvert, they'll be introvertive. Um, so one of the key things that you want is to uh, make, make sure that your mentorship program is rounded enough that their own personality shines true on it. So they take all of your input, but they put their own twist on it. Okay. On to what a, we know what a mentor looks like, so now what does a mentor do? Um, so they listen. Make sure you're available to be a sounding board for solutions, problems and ideas. Okay? You want to be there for the person, you want them to, to be open enough to throw stuff at you. Um, and you want to constructively criticise on that. Okay? Uh, the last thing you need to do is beat somebody up over an idea that they've had, irrespective of how bad it is. Uh, believe me, I've had some stuff thrown at me. Where you go. And, and, and there's words going around the back of my head, and I can't use them because I'm supposed to be nice to this person. But it's good. Okay, let's take a look at this idea that you've had, and let's pick out the good points in it. Okay, so you started with the word there. So there we go, that's something good. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes down a little bit after that. Um, so with constructive criticism, you want to identify the areas that need improvement uh, and focusing on the mentee's behavior and not on their character. Okay? Subtle difference, but it's, it's an important one because everybody has their own quirks and everybody has their own pros and cons. Um, focus on their behaviour and focus on their methodology as opposed to focusing on their character and just take that step back again from those quirks because that will block your, your view of them and it, and it can often cloud it. Um, so you want to support and facilitate, okay? So you want to provide networking experience. Networking probably isn't the best word in this room, okay? We're not talking about VLANs, we're talking about business networking. Um, and um, share your knowledge of the system, okay? Share your contact points, share your, your access to, uh, to the people and offer assistance where required. Um, and just on, on a small tangent on it, um, that's the way the old boys club works, okay? And it, it's that networking and it's that, let me introduce you to this guy, or you need to connect here, this guy will do it. Uh, and when it's done well, it's mentoring at its absolute finest. But as we see with bankers and with these kind of guys, that it's, uh, when it's done badly, it can be hugely detrimental. Um, I've been around an awful long time, and you see through those kind of people very, very quickly and a person's integrity will shine through and, and you'll be able to cut away all the 
fluff and all the, oh, I know this guy and he can connect you with that and all the rest of it. Um, but we've actually got our own boys club, everyone in this room. Yeah. We're all members of the same community, we're all connected. And the great thing about it is that there's no barriers to membership. Okay, You can be a middle-aged, graying, balding, slightly overweight Irish guy and still be a member of the club. Uh, and they, like, the, the work that the, uh, the community has done over the last number of years, like, take any of these conferences, take the Slack community, take the IRCs, take all of that, AFP 548. Like, those things are what our boys club has been built on. Uh, and boys, I'm not excluding girls, <laughs> let me just put that out there. I think it's, uh, it's fantastic that anybody of any skill set uh, can be part of it and can be regarded within the community. Um, yeah, we've got customers here who are paying us to do it. Give them the opportunity and just kind of along the way just nudge them and go, no, you don't want to press that button. <laughs> um, don't force. Okay, uh, don't, uh, don't do what the minty should be doing themselves. Okay, let, let them, don't, don't be kind of pushing them down a path that they're not ready for. And again, that's the balance between protecting from experience and pushing too far. And you know, it, you know what it is. It, it, it's, it's experience that will guide you on it and, uh, and, and knowing that person. And again, as the mentor mentee relationship builds, you get a proper feel for what's right and what's wrong, how far you can push them and where, where to hold back. Um, uh, steer them to the point where you get that feel of resistance, okay? Uh, because if there's a lot of pushback on it, you'll need to sit and discuss and understand what their pain is on it and, and get, a, get a feel for breaking down their inhibitions to what it might be. Um, take the initiative, okay, recognize the need for mentoring and seek it out. Okay. If you've got a mentor, don't be afraid to challenge them, okay, within the context <coughs> of a relationship, because that's the only way that you truly develop yourself. So as 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 a as a as a mentee coming along and um, people are often hesitant to kind of go, look, Jar's very busy, I I will leave him alone this week. Okay. But there's something pressing and it goes on and it goes on and the mentor is busy by, by the nature of that time element thing that we could never find again. Uh, they'll, they'll be busy and part of the thing that, that, that we do as mentors is go out of our way to make that time and do that check-in so it gives that person the window of opportunity. But again, if they're hesitant on it, uh, they need to understand that they need to take the initiative and come with the questions as well. Um, maintain balance, okay? Um, making sure that they preserve time for themselves, for family, for friends, for everything outside of, uh, of the work environment. Because when a partnership like this is running at full tilt, it's very easy to get absorbed into the positive energy and go, yeah, fantastic, right, next week we're building out this lab of computers and we're going to be doing this and we're going to be building a deployment methodology and we're going to be doing this with these groups and suddenly you're absorbed into it and it becomes your world. Uh, and we've all done it. Like how many people here have pulled all nighters on, on scripts or on debugging something just purely because it's fun and you love doing it? Yeah. And, and again, when you're building a career for someone and when you're kind of spiraling up that ladder with them, it's very easy to get absorbed in it and that to become the norm. Uh, and you're there as the mentor gone home at six in the evening and you're on your glass of wine and this person's fervently belting away at it. And they're in a happy place. Um, but there's other people on the outside circle to be considered as well. That, um, for them to work hard, okay, they need to, they need to give their best. Okay? And it's a two-way street. If the mentor is putting in the effort, then the mentee needs to be putting in an equal amount of effort. Um, because the, that, uh, that mentor has already been down that road and they've earned the stripes to be in that position and uh, then it's up for the, the mentee really to take up the mantle uh, just because the mentor isn't 
up there at six o'clock in the evening doing something doesn't mean that mentee has the right to rest on their laurels. So that maintaining balance while working hard, it's, it's something that, that we have to work hard at translating for them and giving them the boundaries of that so that they understand where the expectation is, but where we don't expect them to go just as importantly because it's a, it's a, it's a quirk we want to get right. Don't let them stay in their comfort zone. Okay, it's 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 easy to do, um, and it's something that again people gravitate towards naturally. Um, but you should really encourage them to dive into new experiences, to continuously challenge themselves, um, particularly with stuff that they don't like doing. Okay, so if 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 Archimedes uh, hadn't gotten over his aversion to having bats, then the people, uh, we'd nev he'd never have had that eureka moment, and the people of Syracuse would never have seen him running naked through the streets, and they'd have, <laughs> they'd have missed the prime opportunity there. Uh, it, it's, it's that get out of your comfort zone, do stuff you don't like doing, uh, get in, challenge yourself, and develop yourself. Um, I decided uh, back in October to teach myself Python, because I'm a shocking scripter. I, 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 like I, I, I bastardize scripts. I, I can just about interpret them and take the elements I want to glue them together and then spend three weeks figuring out why they don't work. So I decided I'm teaching myself Python. It, it, it's the right thing to do because I needed a challenge. If possible, conduct them away from the normal work environment. Okay, because if, if you're running this in um, inside and the environment is too close and it, it just doesn't doesn't gel well. It, it's like a meeting, okay, and it's supposed to be much more than a meeting. Uh, the change in environment helps to, to remove the conversation away from the everyday perspectives and it allows you to explore things a bit better. Um, the, um, the mentoring relationship is one of mutual trust and respect, so meet regularly and lead by example. Okay, the mentoring conversation may be informal, but treat your own overall uh, arrangement with formality and professionalism. Yeah. Very key. Uh, set some boundaries, set some uh, performance goals, because again, remember, part of it has to be business related. <coughs> and again, it, it can be something that you take right outside the workplace. As I said, with my students in Taekwondo, it was very much, we weren't looking to achieve anything of any great substance. I didn't take a white belt and I said, in 12 years time, you're going to be a world champion. Um, but I think because of the mentorship program, that happened to be a natural evolution of it. Um, um, and use the sessions to exchange views, give the student guidance, and uh, don't give them an immediate answer to the problem. Again, doing the work for them. Make sure you step back from that. Set them along the right track, okay, and if they're struggling with it, don't answer it for them, but just put them on the road where they can, right, okay, you know what, I'm not giving you the answering, but if you happen to hop onto Rich Trotton's blog, you'd be amazed what you can find there. <laughs> it's getting them to do the work, it's uh, just giving them a nudge in the right direction. Um, a, a simple answer is, is rarely as valuable as understanding how to approach the problem. Okay. I still can't convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius and vice versa because Google does that for me. <laughs> and that's, a, that's an easy way out. I, I've got data always on. So if I happen to land in a country and go, it's hot. It's 72. No, it's not hot. <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave them up on screen, okay? They're, they're the, the, the mentor's commandments as such, the, the, kind of the, the rules that we go by uh, for the people on the, on the sides. Uh, facilitate, don't clone, okay? This is, this is a roundup of what we've been through, okay? So we don't want to make snapshots of ourselves. We want to augment that person's personality with our experience. Um, uniqueness is important, same thing. Okay, 
consistency is critical. Okay, so you want to meet regularly, you want to be moving forward the whole time. Um, faking it is not making it, despite what all the posters say. Okay, uh, provide honest feedback. If they're, and that goes both ways. Uh, if, if the person is bluffing, you'll see through it. And again, work with them as to why they feel the need to do that and on how they can solve the problem properly so that they don't have to bluff. Um, empower them rather than solve. Okay, set them on the right track. Uh, you are not responsible. You have shared responsibility. And this is, this is a hard one as a mentor, especially when you've been doing mentoring for a long time with specific people, um, to uh, not take the burden of responsibility when something happens on your own shoulders. Remember, it's a two-way relationship and, the, and that responsibility has to be shared. And um, appreciate what you're given and what you're given. Giving, given. Irish accent kind of gets that one blended sometimes. Um, so you need to uh, do occasionally, as the elder statesman, take a step back and take a look and go, you know what, I'm getting great value from this as well. And understand that and appreciate that. Um, and remember, it's not coaching, it's mentoring. Okay? And I'm starting to feel this deep into the session that this sounds like me coaching and training <laughs> and talking at you. Uh, Mentoring is, is a more rounded thing than it. Um, Honour the limits and the boundaries. Again, don't, don't, get, don't start stepping over into, into their personal lives or don't let, them, let that encroach on what you need to be doing. Without being sympathetic, obviously, and being there for them because, again, that personal, professional thing has to work. Uh, but don't let it be the ruling factor in any of it. Um, Listening is hard, but advice is easy. Okay? We could all use with more listeners in the world. Okay? Sit back, absorb what they're saying, and listen to what they're saying. Okay? Um, it's easy to give out advice. I've just done it for probably far too long now. Um, um, but listen to, to what's been given and absorb it. Okay? And with that, I'm out. Um, that's my email address and my uh, Twitter and Slack handle. Um, if yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a retweeter rather than a tweeter. <laughs>